Peony, seriously, you get plenty of attention. Stop. We're going to record. You can come up here if you want. You want to come up here? Come on. Okay. Oh. You want to come up? Well, come here. I'm giving you the option. Come on. Come on. You're always wanting to be on my lap for farm videos. Come on. Come on. You got to jump. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come on. You can do it. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Boy, that's so funny. Your brother's legs are giving out. He jumps and I can't even believe when he jumps. And you, I think you can make it, and then you struggle. Okay. Good afternoon. It is Tuesday, April 13th, 2021, here in Sarasota, Florida. It's about 12.50 in the afternoon. And finally, after many months, I am giving into the moment, the impulse of the moment to record. This is video three of For the Farm. Um, it's challenging right now to not over explain what it is I'm intending for any piece of what I call my work. And more than anything, I'm weaving together multiple stories with the underlying assumption that we are all connected. Therefore, by extension, our stories are all connected. Everything I share at any given time has multiple layers. I feel confident saying at least six layers. I could identify at least six layers, intentions, dimensions, aspects of any one piece of anything that I share. I'm not going to do that until and unless a significant amount of viewers ask for that and acknowledge that they get that, that they're really hearing me, that they're beginning to see what it is, the picture I'm trying to paint. Until that point, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is still feeling my way around, one, first and foremost, being my complete authentic self in the moment, and two, stop overthinking and allow the feeling aspects to trump the thinking aspects of, again, my hesitations, I hesitate over the t all the time. My habit is to overthink my triple type A personality, my overly educated mind, it needs to take a back seat to my heart and to the feelings. And I need to break some really deep rooted patterns to allow my heart to be in my driver's seat. Or as I always say, spirit is in the driver's seat, God, divine, whomever, whatever you call the one energy that is greater than us, that is in the driver's seat and I'm in the passenger seat. But I want my heart in the passenger seat and I want my mind in the back seat. It gets to stay in the car. It gets to come on the trip. The trip needs the mind. But it does not get to rule any longer. It's time for being in charge, the thinking, logical side. That has passed. It's now time for the feeling side, the heart side, to lead. And I'm having a hard time just in my own life following my own lead in that regard. So, without further ado, I have known what 
I wanted to title this third farm video for, for months. And I just have been really hesitant to jump in and share it because I know right now very few, maybe one person is seeing and feeling what it is that I'm doing with all these storylines. And it's just a very vulnerable thing because when I share like this, and it, you know, an attempt to allow myself to be as authentic as I want to be, it's, it's really like I'm appearing, it's, it's synonymous to appearing naked in the physical. We know I expose my soul, my soul, what I feel is my soul's work, my soul's mission. When I share lessons that I believe myself to be learning on a soul level, through the character of Allison. It's very, it, 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 it makes me very vulnerable. And therefore, and, and thus far, there's not been many people who for one reason or another, when I really allow myself to be fully in my authenticity, actually share what my opinions are, you know, actually share my ideas and thoughts, it makes a lot of people uncomfortable, right? Um, and I've got hypotheses of categories of who gets the most uncomfortable when I approach certain things, but that's for a different recording. Right now, it's just to say I hesitate because I'm exposing myself, even though it doesn't look like I'm exposing myself. I really am. And I know that I'm stronger than ever to kind of have that protective field around me where any negative judgment, any negative criticism, any negative energy that's just not able or willing to see the best of what I'm trying to share, especially knowing that that's my intent, no longer am I accepting if you can't see and aren't willing and or aren't willing to go to a world of love and break out of this world of fear, I'm not accepting the uncomfortableness as my fault. And for most of my life, that is my deepest pattern that I'm breaking, is my idealism, my extreme level of knowing how true a different reality was, one that was so far beyond this limited reality that is falling apart in front of our eyes right now. I allowed others to tell me that wasn't true. And my whole spiritual awakening was a remembrance that that absolutely is true. And to allow myself to now go after the dream life of manifesting that reality from that foundation without being held back by everybody else's naysaying and negativity. And that's a hard pattern. It's a hard pattern to break. And it definitely requires a great deal of the two things that comprise the title for this video, which was simply faith and trust. Faith and trust. Two of the greatest energies represented, albeit more unconsciously than consciously, in my humble opinion, by the farm and the overall example that our farmer Bill has, has set with his whole operation and the extremely unique way he operates his farm. Faith and trust. I wouldn't be where I am today if not for faith and trust but also, if not, for the experiences, as crazy as they've been, at the farm. Even though the person I am today is not the person I'm gonna to be tomorrow, it's all building upon. Everything that I am today is a culmination of all the experiences, not just in this lifetime, but all my soul's lifetimes. And I happen to believe, although I don't know, I don't even have an intuitive knowing of how old my soul is. I know I've been around this block quite a few times, for sure. 
I know that when I was in Australia, something extremely powerful happened to me and was ignited within me. Specifically on my 10-day trip, I took through the Northern Territory, which included a visit to Uluru, which is the most sacred spot in all of Aborigine culture. Something was ignited within me. And how crazy is it that today, this past weekend, I had a little, I like to call them winks from the universe. Winks from God that just simply say, you're on the right track, whatever you're doing, just keep, stay the course. Stay the course. And it's, it, for me, it's just simply the synchronicities that happen. At a minimum, the synchronicities that happen in our lives are a wink from the universe. The maximum is you're meeting somebody that you've been looking for for 20 years whether it's to have a personal relationship unlike any other you've had, whether it's to have a working relationship unlike you've ever had in this lifetime, you know, that's the range of what synchronicity could be. The synchronicity, and there were many, that happened this weekend. <sighs> oh, I had met this woman before, but I don't even think I remembered that she was Australian. And as it turns out, she and her family, her husband, her husband's been called back to the military in Australia. And where of all places do they live? Or where are they relocating back to? Outside Darwin, in the Northern Territory, where that 10 day trip ended. And I am telling you, oh my God, that like 48 hour period of when we arrived in Darwin, I mean, we went out, I was dancing all night that night. And then we, we spent sunrise at the Indian Ocean. I had connected with three or four people out of the 33 others that were on that trip with me. I, when I was with them and we had, sh I have nothing but positive memories, nothing but positive memories of that trip, super positive. And then she said outside Catherine Gorge and I'm like, I, I canoed down Catherine Gorge. like. Like, it was so crazy that she is going exactly to the spot that was a big part of my ignition, ignition to my remembering and to ultimately to my spiritual awakening, even though it wouldn't happen for like 10 years later. Right? 10. Uh, I was there in 1998. My awakening was 2010, so 12 years later. Um, that was a huge, and I have brought up Australia multiple times in multiple pieces of my work. I need to weave this back to the farm. I am not who I am or where I am today if, if not for all the years I've spent at the farm. The farm has helped me more subconsciously than consciously until recently in this developing these areas, these general areas of trust and faith. You don't operate with the earth and with the environment and have your whole business growing food be dependent on the environment. That doesn't, you, you're not, one is not able to do that without being in harmony to a pretty large degree with the earth. Because the worry I know for myself of what energies I struggle with because I'm, I'm in the office and, and I wouldn't say I'm running the business because Bill makes all the decisions of what he purchases and when. I'm kind of in the position of trying to keep it alive and open as a result of him doing business as he's always done without acknowledging if he doesn't shift how he does business, it's getting more and more challenging for us to remain open as a business. And I have a, a, a very solid hypothesis as to what general area needs to shift more than anything, but in the meantime, I'm just doing the best I can to handle his decisions that are not really connected to the business operation, formally, to the numbers, to all the paperwork crap. He's just doing what he's done for 40 years, and I'm like, okay, what, what decisions did he make last week that I'm going to have to play around with in terms of managing, quite honestly, the flow of money because we don't have a ton of breathing room and that is very, this is not a small, it is a small business as compared to like my little business of me, but as compared to tons and tons of businesses, you know, we do $1.1 million gross sales, right? So it's, 
That's a lot to manage. A $1.1 million comes in and out of the office, and I'm managing that, and I've been doing that for multiple years, and I've been doing it while not on the same page with Bill and just having to be, you know, let him, it's his business, right? No matter what my input is, unless he seeks it, unless he wants to hear it, unless he's ready and willing to work with me, instead of to be, I can't do anything. And that is a very powerful microcosm of the macrocosm. And so it's such a strange thing because I'm sharing these videos for the farm with the intention of giving not only a little bit more information about the magical place that the farm is. And magical means it's the whole spectrum, man. It's real. It's as real as I've yet experienced in the third dimension. It's as real, like stuff you can't make up stuff that has happened, happens, and will continue to happen at the farm. It's, it literally is in sort of a world of its own. So I'm trying to share that story, a little bit more of it through my own, but I'm also trying to connect how working in that environment, working specifically with the energy of Bill, who is, you know, at the time I met him, I, he was definitely one of the most enlightened beings that I had met in form at the time I met him in the fall of 2008. So he was very, he's very spiritual. You can't, you can't do the work that he does without being spiritual. Whether he talks about it or not, he does it. He doesn't need to. He lives it, he feels it. He's there for the earth. He loves the four-leggeds. He loves the animals, loves them. And the, two, the two-legged people, he, that's not his forte. But I don't believe in accidents or coincidences. I know I'm there for bigger reasons. I know I'm supposed to allow myself to be more authentic in this now moment, mid-April 2021, and start sharing what I think, what I genuinely believe is about to hit all of humanity, which is a very big transition, a very big transition. And I can't be afraid to talk about to what degree I believe that is coming in the very near future. Because most people are not seeing that story. Certainly most people in my network. But I have to speak about it in that that's the only way I can honor myself. And again, I can't speak about the present moment without interweaving how all 12 years of my experience at that farm how parts of it have absolutely specifically influenced aspects of my life today. And I can connect it and identify it as such with the understanding that we are co our world tomorrow, we are co-creating right now. We are co-creating right now our world of tomorrow. And our world of tomorrow is going to be a world of love, not a world of fear. And that is a very different, very different world than what we're shifting out of. And there are not mainstream systems in place that are based in love. And part of my calling is to start creating those systems, creating those opportunities. And you're not going to see them. You're not going to understand them. You're not going to participate in it unless you're open to seeing this great reality. And my belief is you're not, no one is going to be able to deny this great reality for much longer. Because there's a lot of insane shit that has been going on for over a year now. The truth, the greater truths, beyond a reasonable doubt. There's a difference. Yes, there's a difference in perspectives. But then there are certain factual truths in this third dimension. Just like 2 plus 2 is 4, not 2 plus 2 is 5. There are certain truths of what actually has already transpired on this planet, in this country, with regards to certain things that are beyond the doubt truthful and they're not being, they're being censored and they're not being shared with the mass public. When the medium through which is the root of that falls, the masses are, they're not going to be able to deny this greater reality. And it's, this comes from the heart this is not anybody else at the farm's opinion. Pretty much no one at the farm sees any of this, and I don't talk about any of this with anybody there directly. But that is part of sharing a story where, yes, one part of me is absolutely representing the farm, 
but only through my own experience there. The greater part of me is just coming to you as me, as somebody that has had 12 years here at this farm. And this farm has so much, just like the animals, so much to teach us, so much to help us see. If we only slow down, open our minds and open our hearts and be willing to see, truly see and feel a different perspective. We are creating, it's up to us. No savior's gonna come, no government has our best interest in mind. I can guarantee you that. Doesn't matter what side. We have got to rise above these BS sides. As long as there's sides, we are not unified. And the shift in consciousness that is taking place and it's gonna take everybody with them, whether they wanna believe it or not, we have to learn how to unify and how to respect one another and to work as teams and to communicate and to allow ourselves to heal and the list goes on. I can't deny my place in sharing story, my own story and all kinds of stories within my story around that knowing. And if that turns people off, it turns them off. And I take a risk of maybe this doesn't draw people in to supporting the farm, but I have to take that risk. I, 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 all I can say is I have to honor the thing that's bigger than me that's working through me. And that is, man, if you can't trust that I'm coming from love, if you can't see and feel the shift, you know, I, then, then, then don't, then pass, pass on through. Don't support the farm in this way, through the Patreon. This is for the Patreon page. So in this way, don't feel, you know, and that's absolutely okay. But I'm, there's so many layers, and one of the layers is, one of the things that I have a hypothesis of is if we can all get to the point where we're able to genuinely support, if only, you know, using money as kind of the main way right now that we show what we have value for, if only a buck a month, if you're able to genuinely support something that you are 180 degrees not in support, like not seeing it the same way, but you're able to support it out of just out of respect that we all have the freedom to make of our life what we want as long as we're not hurting anybody as long as we're not stealing from anybody as long as we're not lying to anybody and I know those things <laughs> I know what's guiding me if you can't give me the benefit of the doubt it might not be your cup of tea it might not be your piece of cake it might not be your sport and that is totally fine but if we can begin to transmute the energy of this world where instead of hating people that think opposite of us, where we can begin to practice supporting, actually supporting others that are 180 degrees on the opposite side of any given spectrum as us. If everybody, and what better way to just baby step to that? How can you not support an organic farm at these times? And I'm being transparent, it is crazy. It's not run very well operationally because God, if you're coming from the higher dimension where money and business, where all of that, it just doesn't exist in the same way, you would better be able to understand why it, it isn't a successful business in the third dimension, because it's not of the third dimension. And he got away with it for a lot of years because he was kind of ahead of his time in a lot of ways. But now it's got to shift, and man, he is not going to allow it to shift working with anybody. So it's like I, I'm just trying to guide the energy. And what I know we need is we need a subsidized funding at where we are right now. I'm trying to get at the root. I'm trying to get at the root, but at, at the root operational. But the reality is that's probably not ever going to happen while Bill is still in form. And that's okay, let's just accept it what it is. I can tell you, I personally am 180 degrees the other way. But I'm not gonna change him, nor should I. Look at what he's accomplished. He's kept the business open for 40 plus years, doing it exactly his way, which is definitely 
not a popular way or a common way to do business. And he's still around, so he's right. Who am I to suggest anything, right? So let's just accept him for who he is and be transparent. We need to be subsidized. If we're gonna continue, we're okay. Right now, the PPP loan saved us. But we're gonna squeeze by to start our fall season by the hair of our, you know, chin chin chin. So I'm trying to just be open and transparent about, you know, about certain aspects and also shed light on the uniqueness of a place that most people simply cannot even imagine. So as much as my words try to paint a picture, it's very hard to paint a picture. We just had an Amazon delivery. Amazon, which I don't really want to continue using. I canceled Netflix, but I haven't canceled Amazon yet. It's more kitty food. We have a small grocery store of cat food in our cupboard to make sure these guys keep eating. Um, so anyway, we'll see if this gets released. Um, again, it's a long shot. We only have a few Patreons at this point anyway. And my guess is, you know, the goal is to attract more because Patreon is a beautiful way of subsidy. That would be a nice, clear way where I can say, hey, this many people supporting on average for this much a month, that is what, you know, that will help us sustain. I know the approximate amount that we're short. And I, you know, one of the other ideas I have that I will, if you listen to all the pieces being woven in, if you know, if you follow any other piece of my work outside of the farm, you know I'm also in the race world. So I'm trying to merge my worlds and I'm working towards trying to figure out a way to put on a race, a 5K, 10K, that benefits the farm. That an annual event where 100% of proceeds after expenses subsidize the farm. Like, I think it's such a win-win opportunity. But like with many things here, I'm gonna start laying, in, laying out ideas, showing how they all connect. But I've said before, I I'm not intended to work alone. Like I'm gonna do as much as I can to lay it all out, but as I share it, it's gonna take people seeing the bigger picture and to take to see how they play into the story and what role they can play. And if they want to be part of going from this, the idea, the vision, to the end result goal. And in this case, let's use the race, putting on a race that would then be, I mean, the first year is the hardest year. And with the goal of having it be an annual event that subsidizes the farm, then in a way we're kind of helping ourselves and we're not constantly going outside of ourselves to ask for money. That doesn't make me comfortable. And I'm in the role that unless I'm doing it, no one else is going to do it. Doesn't make me comfortable. I, I want us to be able to, I think there's a difference between a short-term help and then a reliant help. And I would like it to be a short-term helping to help us finally get at the root and to come together with an idea that addresses the root problem. And the reality, honest and direct, is that we operate at multiple tens of thousands in the negative right now. And part of the reason for that is that Bill pay, takes care of his employees. As long as you put in the time and the effort, he, he raises us to a level that is, it's hard for a single person in this community to support themselves on what he pays, but it's more than any other farm, I can almost guarantee, pays if you put in your time. And to me, that's an honorable thing. That kind of plays into the faith and the trust. It was almost like he knew in some sense that the new economy going forward is certainly an acknowledgement of and recognition on some level, again, various consciousness levels. On some level, he recognized that he couldn't do what he wanted to do as a business without his employees. And he definitely compensate more than more than any other employer I've ever had percentagely. He has compensated for the top, like more than any other employer. He is more generous by any corporation, big corporation I've ever worked for. Now it might be a strange, a little bit disconnected way of valuing us because it doesn't come verbally at all. I dare say none of us know where we really stand with, with Bill, like how he sees us. 
which can be, you know, I've had my close friend Chris, when he worked there for the short time that he did, shortly after I started, the fall of 2008 into early 2009, he could not handle the lack of feedback. He could not handle it. It triggered all sorts of things within him, and he only lasted three months. The farm is so challenging and trains people in, in so many unusual ways that I have never been able to get at any other job. And I would love to be able to share more of that, again, through my story. This is now getting too long, and again, I'm not so sure it's going to convey anywhere near what I was hoping it would convey, but I knew I had to leap in, because every time I think of recording, I put it off, because I'm like, people are still aren't going to get it, they're not going to see what you're trying to do, and I just have to trust that even if there's a few people watching these now, that just having the courage to speak it honestly and to release it out there is going to allow me to keep following and being pulled by the greater energy that's pulling me. I'm not at that farm accidentally because I keep trying to leave that farm. And how, there's just no accidents. And there's no way, in my opinion, after all this virus craziness, that we can deny the importance, the practical, spiritual importance, both in the third dimension practical and in the the fifth dimension and beyond where we're going, spiritual, how important that place is. And that's why I keep staying. Because I know that it's just training for me to not resist, to let go, and to trust and have faith. Because no matter which way I slice it, that bigger than me energy that I am humbly trying to allow myself to honor by fully channeling it in the present moment as much as I can every single moment of every single day. All that, I have to have faith and trust because basically, and, and that tells me that that is the most important thing. Being there, I'm the only one right now in that farm community that can do the role that I'm doing. The role that I'm doing and I'm not comfortable with it is keeping the business alive. If I walked, I don't know that the business and, and so I keep coming back. Spirit wants you there. Spirit needs you there. Spirit needs this farm to stay open in what it's doing. Keep trusting, Allison. Keep having faith. Keep humbly releasing your ego. Stop being frustrated. Stop feeling like it's taking you away from your work. <laughs> your work is being there right now during this transition. And to help bring the story of this specific thing to light because it can be applied generally to everything going on in the world right now for anyone that's willing to see it and hear it that way and more importantly to feel it that way. We're shifting from fear to love. And again, the farm is not a perfect example of all these things. But it is an example of faith, trust, nature, slowing down, connecting to the planet, and treating your body in terms of food as, as well as anything when you're taking in fresh organic, especially when grown by your own hands. You know, it's hard to argue that those things don't have tremendous value right now. So we're going to keep going. And I can't believe this one stayed on my lap the whole time. Can you tell she loves to be pet? All right, we're just gonna let it run out and we'll cut it. Although she'll stay here forever and I have to get back to the farm for my office shift. So thank you for listening. If you're starting to feel the story, that's great. If not, that's okay. And if you barely made it through the first couple of minutes, you won't know that I'm saying this anyway. So thanks for listening.